What's up guys welcome back. This is Anime Crossover, you'll be watching What If Naruto Was Reincarnated As Vegito Part 7 Now Let's Begin. Naruto lets out a sigh of frustration as he rises to his feet and surveys his surroundings. Here we are once more, he remarks as he sits upright. Naruto's expression turns serious as he senses his energy dwindling. Oh no, Goku Black is such a nuisance. He was incredibly powerful. Super Saiyan Rose 3, what on earth, man how am I supposed to fight against that? Naruto thought. As if that wasn't enough, he was somehow using destruction key. Seriously, what is going on? Naruto continued to think. He sighed heavily and ran his hands over his face, feeling completely defeated for the first time in a while. Naruto simply wanted to challenge himself against Beerus, as he doesn't consider him a professional. Goku Black, Naruto pondered how he could possibly overcome his opponent. His energy has significantly decreased compared to before, and he only has a limited amount of time remaining before his body dissipates and ceases to exist. Naruto was unsure of how to proceed. Hachiyak is a concern as well, although Black poses a significantly greater threat. How on earth did he manage to get there? How long has he been in this world? Naruto pondered. This doesn't make any sense at all, Naruto thought. He composed himself with a deep breath. In order to stand a chance against his opponent, Naruto had to achieve the level of Super Saiyan God and fully manifest in this realm. Naruto expressed dissatisfaction with this clone body of mine. Naruto pondered how he could possibly bring his other body to this location. He was completely clueless about where to start, and the only way he ended up here was by relying on the evil Dragon Balls. Naruto was going to seek assistance from Connor to navigate the multiverse and find a means of transportation to bring us here. He lifted his head when he heard a knock on the door, and Naruto finally became aware of his attire. He was dressed in grey sweatpants and nothing else, with bandages covering his body. Please, come in, Naruto says as the door opens and Saber enters. Master, she says in a respectful manner. Saber, how are you doing? She inquires with a genuine sense of care reflected in her eyes. I must admit, I am feeling quite defeated, Naruto confided, as she approached and took a seat on my bed, her gaze fixed upon me. What happened to the singularity? He asked her. Fortunately, thanks to your actions, you managed to grab onto me right as I collided with the dragon witch and Jean, she says, leaving me surprised. Jean, Naruto asked her with curiosity. Oh, there are two of them although, only one of them appears to be the genuine one, she responds. How is it possible that there are two of them? He inquired about her. According to Dr. Romani's analysis, it seems that Castor, Giles de Raiz, summoned a gene who shared his beliefs by making a wish upon the grail. So, how exactly was the other one summoned? I asked her, but she just shrugged in response. We don't know, she says, and he lets out a sigh. Master, she calls out, attempting to convey a message. Yes, can you tell me about the opponents you were facing? Da Vinci mentioned that the singularity was on the verge of collapsing because of the immense power being unleashed. Furthermore, the fact that they have brought you to such a state is a significant cause for concern, she interrogated Naruto, prompting him to sigh and rub his nose. There are two characters to choose from, Hachiyak and Zamasu, whichever you prefer. Is the one dressed in black called Hachiyak? She asked to confirm. Actually, the one in black is called Zamasu as well. For simplicity's sake, you can refer to him as Goku Black, Naruto corrected her. I'm not overly concerned about Hachiyak, since I was about to defeat him, but Goku Black is posing a significant challenge, he remarks, a frown appearing on my face. He faced Hachiyak and made every effort to survive against Goku Black. Even then, Goku Black was merely toying with him. He didn't even need to tap into his full power. He could have easily transformed into Super Saiyan Rose and still would have dominated the fight. In the end, Naruto had no choice but to unleash his most powerful forms, combining his Mark of Naruto, Legendary Super Saiyan 4 Full Power, and the Kaioken x 115. He was still unable to compete with him. Naruto could have had a more streamlined experience if he had prioritized other aspects of his mission instead of dedicating so much attention to safeguarding the civilians. Even though Naruto claims to be operating at only half power, he attributes this to the fact that he is using a clone. However, 
there is a significant disparity in both power and experience between Goku Black and myself. Impressive, how are the others? He inquired, they were able to successfully ray shift back because the dragon witch had the holy grail with her when you teleported us out of there. She mentions that Da Vinci has already developed some strategies to utilize it for our advantage in addressing the remaining singularities. That's great, that's great, he says with a sense of relief. He sealed his lips, experiencing an emotion that had long been absent from his life. Anxiety. It has been quite a while since Naruto last experienced it. Even when confronted with Beerus, he remained undaunted. However, when faced with Goku Black, Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of fear. Naruto was facing a formidable opponent who could easily back up their bold claims. He believed he was already strong enough. However, his assumptions were proven incorrect. Goku Black reminded me of the overwhelming sense of fear that can consume a person. Indeed, Naruto experienced a sense of apprehension, along with another emotion. Enthusiasm. Goku Black is a formidable adversary that Naruto has encountered. Indeed, he was engaging in playful behavior, clearly aware that he was merely experimenting with his abilities in comparison to his opponent. Naruto deeply regretted his behavior towards the people of Chaldea and wished he could have acted more professionally. Except for Odin, he is quite unpleasant. He should discuss with Connor the possibility of exploring alternate dimensions for personal travel purposes. Meanwhile, Naruto had a professional conversation with Saber to discuss the origins of Goku Black and resolve any misunderstandings that had arisen. Goku Black's perspective. This power is incredible, I exclaim as a luxurious black fur envelops my body. My hair remains in perfect condition, like a delicate rose. Wow, this is the form they call Super Saiyan 4, I exclaim, feeling the immense power coursing through every fiber of my being as a time halo emerges from my back. With a symmetrical design reminiscent of a clock's hands at 12 and 6 o'clock. Finally, I am able to utilize this, I remark, sensing the immense potency flowing through me. It appears that you have achieved success in your undertaking, a voice speaks from behind me. Indeed it was Zamasu, I say, glancing over to see my other self. I can't believe how lacking in foresight I was, I admit, as I come to understand the error in my previous mindset. Naruto demonstrated his expertise when I was observing him covertly. This body belongs to a Saiyan that I have claimed as my own for quite some time now. I eliminate a remaining time patroller with a powerful attack. Kronoa managed to escape, Zamasu comments. She did, but she is no longer relevant. We have already obtained what we came for, I state confidently, sensing the immense power of Toki Toki within me. I feel disappointed as I realize that I cannot sustain my control over time without this particular form. Something to improve upon, Naruto's point of view. So, that's them, I say, providing a comprehensive explanation of Hachiok and Goku Black. Although, I just explained that Goku Black is a deity from another realm who took over Goku's physical form to simplify the concept for their comprehension. We are in a difficult situation, aren't we? comments Olga with a look of despair on her face. Not quite, I inform her. How can I achieve this? She inquires. Do you believe I am by myself? I inquire of her, for I am currently utilizing both of my physical forms. One person is present in the current situation while the other is engaged in a conversation with Connor regarding the ongoing events. Fortunately, I am becoming adept at multitasking with two different bodies. Are there any other individuals with similar expertise? Romani asks in a serious manner, causing Olga to be visibly surprised. Not quite my usual style, but someone with a unique approach, I say. I urge you all to prioritize resolving the issues in Chaldea and assisting the surviving masters. My physical form has only three months left before it vanishes, I inform them, and they acknowledge my request. I would recommend considering exploring a different singularity. I express my concern about having to take a less active role and potentially having to step back from the situation if things escalate. It's disheartening to realize that I won't be able to participate in the fight anymore. Getting through I was heavily drained by Goku Black, and it was not beneficial that I had to unleash everything I had to defeat him. Rest assured, Saber is capable of fighting at her usual level or even surpassing it, I remark, observing their expressions. Master, are you certain about this? You mentioned that you're low on energy, 
Saber says, looking at me. Saber, keep in mind the significant amount of magic I granted you to confront the dragon witch. It only took a fraction of a second of my time here, I inform her, realizing the extent to which Chaldea will struggle in my absence. I supplied Artoria with sufficient magical energy to effectively resolve the singularity in under 10 minutes. Wow, her stats are still incredibly impressive, and it seems like they'll stay that way for a while. I've practically stopped providing her with any magical energy. However, I was outmatched by Goku Black and had no choice but to make a hasty retreat. Goku Black will definitely defeat them, and let's not forget about the other individuals assisting him. If the worst case scenario occurs, we should be ready to evacuate Chaldea completely, I inform them, but Olga, Romani, and Mash appear quite hesitant to agree. None of you have the necessary expertise to handle this situation. It is far beyond your capabilities. Instead, I suggest you concentrate on retrieving the Holy Grails from the Singularities. Rest assured, I will be by your side to ensure a safe return, should the need to escape arise, I state confidently. In the meantime, I will work on enhancing the defenses of this place. Rest assured, I will provide detailed instructions for implementation. I raise my hands and inform them. As I depart, I catch a glimpse of disappointment on Olga's face for a brief moment. I'll make sure to speak with her at a more convenient time. Returning to the Dragon Ball reality, Naruto's true body arrived before Connor and Naruto began their conversation. Come on, answer the phone, I mutter impatiently while waiting for Connor's response. After a few minutes, he finally accomplishes the task. Finally, what took so long? I inquire about his condition as I observe his demeanor. Things are beginning to get intense, he replies. He appears to have some injuries and his clothes are damaged. I have the ability to perceive skeletal structures. I battle Darkseid, and wow, he is incredibly powerful, he says before coughing up some blood. Wow, I was completely unprepared for him, he remarks as his wounds visibly heal. I utilized all of my skills to emerge victorious and prevent his return to Apocalypse. Even then, I had to depend on the blue solar energy that this armor can generate, he says quickly. I lost three worlds, three entire worlds that I meticulously had customized for me, he laments. Well, darn, I say. What's got you so spooked? He inquires. I battled against Hachiyok and Goku Black, both significantly stronger than I had anticipated, I say, wearing a frown as a result of my defeat. Judging from your expression, it seems like things didn't go as planned, he remarks. No, no it did not, but it has fortunately emphasized something. We need to gain expertise in navigating through various dimensions, I inform him with a serious tone. I am facing a challenging situation where I have a significant responsibility and people are relying on me at this moment, I state. All right, you're in a fortunate position, he says as he brings up something. A box, hold on. How did you acquire a mother box? I inquire, curious about its origins. Despite already possessing the Mobius chair of his reality, it seems to only hold information about his own universe. Hi father, Darkseid's brother, approached me with a proposal for a treaty. As part of our agreement, I requested a mother box, as they are not readily available elsewhere. Hi father, recognizing the value of having a powerful ally against Darkseid, agreed to my request. Frankly, I grew weary of his empty words, he states, clearly satisfied with the treaty. I just managed to grasp it, but I am confident that it will greatly assist me in solving this, he remarks, as a projection materializes from the mother box. Excuse me, but could you please explain what this is? I inquire, examining it closely. Thanks to my extensive research on the Rock of Eternity and the Mobius Chair, I have successfully created a model of this universe. I have meticulously calculated its scale, mass, volume, density, and various other parameters, he explains, leaving me in awe of his impressive creation. Now, with the program that I have running, the mother box will soon start calculating different dimensions, and then proceed to scan other universes. In addition, I am also utilizing a secondary program to conduct a thorough scan for artifacts of significance or potency. Allow me to demonstrate the results of my initial test run with this program, he explains, producing a collection of striking blood-red jewels. These philosopher stones come from various DC universes, he explains, leaving me in awe. Wow, I say, 
completely taken aback. I must admit, it was only possible to conduct the test run because of my prior scanning of this Earth and other worlds. Currently, I am expanding my scanning to include universes, starting with this one and eventually moving on to others, he explains, but I can't help but notice a significant flaw in his plan. How can you calculate other realities? I inquire. You'll have to go there in person, I state. That's the best part, I already am, he responds. Naruto's perspective. How? I inquire of Connor, taken aback by the significant revelation he just shared with me. Thanks to Danny acquiring Jason's memories, I was truly inspired by the meticulous approach of the organization they were affiliated with in calculating their own. Once I mastered the technique, I successfully computed the precise coordinates for Danny's reality, he says with a cheerful expression, directing his gaze towards me. You were there, how could I reach you? I pause as he smirks at me, and I become. I suddenly realize the significance of the mirror. Yes, can you come over here? I inquire, causing him to wear a frustrated expression. Yes, it's currently in the process of calculating your position. If I were to attempt to reach you now, I would be in the approximate vicinity of your reality. However, this process will take some time, he says, wearing a self-assured grin. I am not even complaining because, wow, he works quickly. Also, I will prioritize my efforts on eliminating Darkseid, Connor says with a sigh. Why are we suddenly giving him attention? I inquire. He poses a significant threat to me at the moment, he remarks as the projection vanishes. Darkseid is aware of my abilities and sees me as a formidable opponent. Additionally, with the recent treaty between my empire and New Genesis, he may attempt to undermine my empire from within. I must remain vigilant during this critical period, especially as I navigate the delicate process of merging the Almorak Empire with my own, he explains, and I nod in understanding. Frankly, I struggle to envision myself overseeing countless diverse realms. I would have no free time remaining. So, with the mirror, you can establish a connection between this reality and yours, I explain, diligently taking notes. Yes, even though it may take some time, is your clone still present in that alternate reality? He inquires, and I affirm with a nod. We will require a mirror similar to this one in that alternate reality, he remarks, causing me to furrow my brow. It's going to be just as challenging, isn't it? I inquire, and he flashes a wide grin. Oh no, I mutter, rubbing my eyes. All right, I say with a sense of resignation as my other self is currently engaged in a discussion about the next singularity. Oh, that brings something to mind. Did I mention the incident with the ghost figure that seemed to freeze time? I inquire. No, thank you. Upon my arrival at Chaldea, I immediately conveyed my ability to sense the singularity through spirit control. As time stood still, I found myself in motion while a mysterious blue mist with piercing red eyes fixated its gaze upon me. As I observed the blue mist, it evoked a sense of witnessing a powerful force in motion, spreading advancement wherever it travels, and it seemed to pose a threat towards me. I responded using one of my key's will abilities, confronting it with a calm demeanor. Despite feeling the intense pressure from countless adversaries, I simply raise an eyebrow, I explained to him, noticing his incredulous expression. You faced such a large number of them, how did you manage to survive? He inquires. My key's will is partially responsible for that, although it wasn't particularly strong at the beginning, it has paved the way for improvement, I inform him. Keys will, he inquires, clearly perplexed. Oh, I never informed you, huh? I thought I did, all right, so someone can be considered to have a certain level of awareness about its existence. However, this does not imply actual sentience. Instead, it is more of an inclination or a unique ability that sets them apart from others. Someone could possess a remarkable level of key control, enabling them to maintain a calm demeanor and utilize key fire or key electricity with exceptional proficiency. Additionally, they may experience physical growth and various other abilities, I explain, providing a concise summary of this aspect of key. For example, Freeze's key's will is incredibly impressive. It provides him with numerous benefits, such as a faster rate of improvement, the ability to grow stronger as he ages passively, and it even slows down his aging process. Additionally, it greatly enhances his key control and makes it easier for him to control in general, I explain, feeling frustrated but managing to calm myself down. I doubt Frieza had any knowledge of key wills. 
If he harnessed his potential, it's hard to say just how powerful he could become. However, he would inevitably reach a limit regardless of the circumstances. Until he acquired God Key, that is. That is completely false, says Connor. Yes, it's even more astonishing that Frieza's key will is, well, key, I disclose. Wait, what's yours? He inquires. Mine was betterment, I respond. What? Oh, it has changed, I inform him. Wait, does it provide you with benefits similar to those in a video game? He asks. Indeed, that seems to be the case, I acknowledge, now fully aware of it. What? My key's will is growth. Freeze's will is key. This is not accurate. Indeed, we all have our own limits, but pushing ourselves to those limits can elevate us to a level akin to greatness. On the other hand, given the significant differences in this environment, it is reasonable to assume that the gods possess immense power. Wow, so what is yours now? Growth, I respond to him. Wow, I interrupt him before he can say anything more. I must clarify that while I strive for excellence, there are definite boundaries to my abilities at present, I inform him. I believed Saiyans possess the ability to surpass any limit. It's worth noting that Saiyans have the potential to surpass their limits, although it may require some unconventional methods. Discovering from Salama's records, individuals in the Dragon Ball verse possess a distinct boundary in terms of their potential. Salama, however, managed to transcend this limitation by harnessing the power of grand magic, I explain. Grand magic, the magical equivalent of God Key that you mentioned earlier, seems to suggest that God Key is another means of surpassing mortal limitations, he concludes. Correct once more, although I must mention that I possess additional God Key. However, in order to reach my maximum potential, I must first nurture it, I inform him, while delicately searching for the divine key within my very being. Easily located, based on Salama's records, my understanding of utilizing God Key is limited. I can utilize it just like Key, but that would be a tremendous squandering of its potential. I need to be able to use it just like I use my regular Key. In order to fulfill that request, I require a greater quantity of it. Is it possible for me to acquire some God Key? Connor inquires. Once I have more information, I want to ensure your well-being, but it's likely that you'll need to acquire Key first, I mention, to which he agrees with a nod. I will begin working on the portals, he states before abruptly losing the connection. I suppose it's time to truly acquire God Key. Naruto's perspective. Are you sure about this? Bomi asks, her voice filled with concern, as I discuss Chaldea and their grand order, along with my newfound determination to train. Indeed, in order to face adversaries of significantly greater strength, it is imperative for me to be adequately equipped, I remark, engrossed in my book on the intricacies of magical knowledge. I glance in her direction. She seems to have genuine concern for me. Pausing my reading, I gently touch her face as she gazes into my eyes. I recognize your strength, she says, firmly taking hold of one of my hands. You are stronger than me, I I want to assist you, I genuinely do, she says, maintaining direct eye contact. You are providing valuable assistance. No. I am not. I have been experimenting and even learning magic on the side, but I am not particularly skilled in it, and I don't have a strong inclination towards it," she says. Bomi, there's no need for you to exert yourself. I understand. Dot but I don't want to be ineffective. The Goku Black you mentioned, you admitted that even if you fought him at your maximum strength, he would still surpass you. He only resorted to his version of Super Saiyan 3 to mock you. To test it out, I interrupted as I quickly grasped his intention. Furthermore, to toy with me, I remark as Bomi gazes in my direction. Test it, she inquires. Based on my understanding, he is undoubtedly one of the most formidable adversaries I will ever encounter, I begin to elaborate on my knowledge of Goku Black. When he first fought the real Goku, Black was able to somewhat keep up with Goku as a Super Saiyan 2, in his base form. I am much stronger than they were back then when I give it my all, I explain, recalling every detail about Goku Black. The Goku Black that I encountered displayed an extraordinary level of power. His ability to regenerate from my attacks was reminiscent of a Majin's, and then. I pause, reflecting on the awe-inspiring sight of him transforming into Super Saiyan Rose 3. His tail grew back, 
I'm uncertain about my ability to confront him in the near future, especially if he were to achieve Super Saiyan 4. It would be quite challenging. So, you mentioned Black has this thing called Super Saiyan Rosé. What's the deal with that? She inquires. Well, you see, Zamasu was initially a god, but when he possessed Goku's body, his physical form no longer retained its divine nature. However, his essence or soul remained godlike. Although Goku's body can't be classified as a true god's body, it can be seen as a sort of imitation. By fully aligning his soul with his new body, Zamasu was able to tap into a variation of Super Saiyan Blue, I clarify based on my understanding. But, how does that work? Shouldn't he have golden hair instead? She asks. He did, but that was during his process of mastering the power within Goku's body. Once he achieved that, Super Saiyan Rosé became his default form, I explain, prompting her to appear deep in thought. Could you please retrieve it yourself? I mean, she starts, but I comprehend her line of thinking. No, Zamasu was actually born as a god and later possessed a mortal's body. It's worth noting that Goku already possessed god ki at that time, so the mortal body was already familiar with it, I clarify. If I were to reach the pinnacle of my abilities and exhaust all mortal energy, Super Saiyan Rosé would be a comparable transformation that I could potentially achieve. However, it's worth noting that I already possess some divine energy within me. Nevertheless, I would still need to undergo rigorous training to harness it fully, I explain to her. How can I acquire it? She inquires, perched on my lap. Based on the information I gathered from Salama's records, I need to push myself to my absolute limits. This process is quite straightforward, I would channel my mortal energy into my divine energy, using my mortal energy as a catalyst to ignite and fully replace my divine energy. It's important to note that these steps are only necessary if I were starting from scratch. In that case, I would have to dedicate a significant amount of time to cultivating my mortal energy and gradually nourishing the small trace of divine energy that exists within every being. I would be in a much more challenging situation, I conclude. How can I improve my strength? She inquires, resting her head on my chest while I embrace her tightly. In all honesty, your potential is truly remarkable and you would likely surpass me in my base form within a few months if you resumed your training as before. However, if you truly desire to enhance your strength, it would be beneficial for you to expand your knowledge in the realm of magic, I advise. Why would expanding my knowledge of magic enhance my abilities? It appears to be highly advantageous in various situations, she remarks. Magic itself is a tremendous advantage for those who aspire to learn. It's important to note that portrayals of magic users in media often romanticize the practice, overlooking the years of dedication required to become proficient. However, I have managed to make significant progress due to my unwavering commitment. I made a wish to Paranga, asking for the utmost talent in magic, and I have been diligently studying my magic book to the best of my abilities, I explain. What I am discussing are the passive advantages, so to speak. Having a deeper understanding of magic has the potential to slightly extend your lifespan. Not only that, it also fortifies your soul, which in turn strengthens your body and mind, I elaborate. Improving one aspect of yourself, such as your body, soul, or mind, can have a positive impact on the other two. For instance, let's consider the mind. It has limitations in terms of how much information it can store, influenced by various biological factors. However, if you focus on enhancing your soul, I clarify its significance. This is the primary reason why I strive to prioritize all three. Zamasu Goku Black possesses extensive knowledge of Ki and his Super Saiyan forms surpass my own in terms of power. Considering Beerus' formidable magical abilities, it is reasonable to assume that Zamasu would possess knowledge of magic as well. At this point, I am seriously considering accepting the training offer that was presented to me. In order to effectively counter Zamasu, it is imperative that I acquire God Ki for myself. I have a sudden inspiration. Bomi, have you ever considered exploring the possibility of possessing God Ki? I mean, given that part of your body originated from Majin Buu, who absorbed some of the Kais, I inquire, prompting her to blink in response. No, I haven't yet, she says with a smile. I move closer to claim her lips as my own. She lets out a sigh of pleasure as I gently caress her backside, my touch bringing her pleasure. I will address everything later, 
at the moment I have someone to please. One month later, Naruto's perspective, this appears to be a viable option, I inform Bomi after carefully closing my book on magic and gazing up at the stars above me. It better be, she says, slightly annoyed, as it took us quite a while to find a suitable world with some viable stars for your rituals. I skillfully channel magic into my hands and gracefully wave them around, meticulously preparing a complex ritual circle. So, how does this work exactly? She inquires, her gaze fixed upon the colossal magical circle. I will need to utilize the cosmic energy released by the stars at specific intervals. This particular set of rituals heavily relies on atromancy. Wouldn't that be a way to predict future events? She inquires. Atromancy has applications beyond divination. Although divination is undoubtedly a potent aspect of it, its effectiveness relies on one's inherent talent for clairvoyance. Personally, I have delved deep into researching atromancy and discovered that while I could utilize it to glimpse into the future, my lack of natural clairvoyant abilities limits me to perceiving potential outcomes rather than the definitive one. I explain, emphasizing my extensive research on the subject. That would have been helpful, she remarks as we both observe the outcome of my efforts. A ritual circle of considerable size, measuring approximately 5 miles in diameter. This ritual is highly potent and effective. So, what do you plan to do with this? She inquires, gesturing towards the massive block of Kachin next to another block of equal size made of pseudo-north metal. This ritual is incredibly intricate and complex, I explain to her, carefully reviewing every line I meticulously carved into the ground as I hover above. I recently discovered that despite my efforts in producing North Metal, it appears to be lacking certain crucial qualities and its abilities seem to be somewhat diminished, I explained to her as I gracefully descend from the sky. I explained to her the limitations of my variant of the substance. It lacks the same level of self-sustenance and regeneration as true North Metal, and its adaptive aspect is weaker. Additionally, it is more brittle compared to the authentic version. True North Metal possesses chronokinetic abilities, Unlike mine, I mutter, disheartened by the factors that render my variant ultimately inferior. I require access to pure North Metal to thoroughly study its composition and accurately replicate it. So, why the Kachin? She inquires professionally. I will be combining both pseudo North Metal and the other material, as the former is significantly weaker, I respond to her. Wait, how exactly? She asks, leaning in closer to me. This ritual is a significant step towards achieving mastery as a wizard in this universe. With access to abundant materials and a wealth of knowledge, I may have already surpassed ritual masters by successfully creating this ritual circle myself. Regarding magical abilities, I am currently at an intermediate level and on the verge of advancing to a higher level. Still, you mentioned that about a year ago, she says in disbelief. Yes, it's important to note that I haven't yet delved into the realm of dimensional magic which is a prerequisite for the ability to self-resurrect, I explain. I am striving to acquire the ability of complete resurrection for myself. However, the level of expertise, dedication, and hard work required is substantial. Resurrecting others in oneself at will is an ability that I find incredibly challenging at the moment, despite how effortlessly the Dragon Balls make it appear. However, once I achieve this, I can proudly declare that I have overcome mortality. Based on my research, it appears that the ability to resurrect has no discernible restriction on the number of individuals one can revive, including oneself. However, it is important to note that the use of magic is still required for this process. This is the extent of my understanding on the matter. This spell necessitates a comprehensive understanding of multiple magical disciplines in order to be successfully cast. Temporal spatial magic, fate manipulation magic, restoration magic, necromancy, and other similar types of magic are considered to be the most crucial. While there are a few more sub-schools, the key point is the valuable information they encompass. That sounds like a questionable claim, I mean, how would that have any impact on the universe? And if they truly had the ability to bring themselves back to life, why aren't there any of them still around? She questions, causing me to momentarily lose my footing, as I am already aware of the answer. Destruction, I assert. A god of destruction possesses the authority to annihilate anything within the universe under their jurisdiction or that has its origins from it, I respond to her. They have a vast destructive power, capable of annihilating anything within their reach. 
the individuals responsible for this spell were completely erased from existence. The only way I obtained information about them is through the Namekian Dragon Balls, which derive their knowledge from the Namekian Book of Legends. Additionally, these Dragon Balls have a unique connection to the Super Dragon Balls, I clarify. I would like to locate the Super Dragon Balls for personal use in the future. Given my limitations, it is unfortunate that I am unable to acquire my own set of Dragon Balls. Even possessing the knowledge of how to create them would be futile, as only pure-blooded Namekians possess the ability to do so. I need time Bomi, you can watch if you want, I tell her as she starts to fly back to the ship after we kiss for a moment. I watch her soar away. Tonight, I'm smashing that delicious piece of ass, I made a vow to myself while looking at her ass. When I can't see her anymore, I start to chant. As I chant, I see sections of the ceremonial circle begin to light. I chant for hours while the Suad North Metal and Kachin seem to change into a liquid and begin to merge into each other at a very slow speed. Sweat starts to drip from my forehead as the attention that I need to have for this is enormous, and I battle with it every step of the way. If I weren't in Salama's realm, the quantity of magic I use would be felt across the universe. This is the most magic I've used at one time. Soon, I begin to let magic touch my physical body in order to better cope with the stress of the ritual. Connor informed me that performing this for numerous draining spells is an excellent technique to cope with magic consumption. After another hour, my hands are on my knees as I take a break from the sheer amount of work that I've put into this practice. Success, I exclaim, beaming at the chunk of metal in front of me. Naruto's paw, okay, like it and make it, I tell my computer. Estimated completion time 6 days, and 3 hours, it says as I recline back in my chair. I glance at the screen for a time before crossing my arms and concentrating on Chaldea for a bit. And apparently Emperor Nero is a woman, who looks quite similar to Saber. Huh, I shake my head since controlling two bodies at the same time continues to be a significant difficulty. I rise up from my desk and reach out my hand as Salama's crew arrives. I take it and pour my magic into it. Take a deep breath while doing so. My senses expand to include the full realm that Salama created which now belongs to me. Power fills every cell in my body, and information floods my head, which I fiercely push it back. Trying to teach me the mysteries of reality. Knowledge that should not be expressed seeks to push itself into my thoughts. I hold it at bay with nothing but sheer willpower while searching the whole of this realm. I'm searching for something that Salama invented called the Omnificence Crystal. A prototype of Super Dragon Ball. Despite the fact that it is a prototype, it is one of the factors that enabled Salama to reach Zeno's level and even exceed him. According to his notes, it is capable of fulfilling the aspirations and dreams of anybody who has it. At least, that was his objective. Essentially, he created a wishing sphere that could grant wishes as long as it had the energy to do so, with no cooldown whatsoever. He also said that he could partly influence universal laws, which helped him comprehend them. Going far further into these universal laws, I discovered that he was referring to divine authorities and their succeeding, lesser, forms. Gods of destruction have the universal law of destruction, however Zeno may be considered to have the multiversal rules of destruction, which goes a long way to illustrate exactly how strong Zeno is. Salama was an incredible freaking monster. He not only worked out a means to utilize the laws, but also to employ the rules, which simply sounds like absolute nonsense, but there is where grand magic comes into play. Every entity who performs magic, at least in this reality, may take possession of a universal law, given that they attain a specific level of understanding in whatever topic that they want for. Granted, Zeno has absolute control over the laws in this reality and outright denies anyone access to it. If I were to try and access any universal law under his control, he would obliterate me from existence, however, the laws that I could possibly gain access to are magic, creation, time, reality, and the known. To be honest, I'm thinking about the divine authority of time, but I put it on the back burner for the moment. What the fuck is the divine authority of the known? I have absolutely no idea what it possibly be. I'm going to concentrate on divine authority, magic, for now. Quite basically, all I need to do is hit a certain barrier in my magical understanding. Reading my magic book on a variety of subjects teaches me one thing. I'm spreading myself too thin right now. 
If I obtain control of any divine authorities, it will be magic. I step over and grab my book of magic as I continue to read more about soul magic. Fighting Goku Black and watching him utilize destruction energy, which is one of the things that may truly circumvent my immortality and kill me, made me very afraid. In reality, I am still terrified. This is why I'm seeking for any knowledge regarding soul magic that I can. I need to discover a method for my immortality to start working on my soul. I grimace as I study the intricacies of this specific sort of magic and find that the criteria to utilize it are quite severe. One incorrect action, and I may wind up destroying my soul so horribly that not even my immortality would be able to rescue me at that point. It would be like doing brain surgery with a chainsaw. Baby steps, I suppose. Somewhere else third pav. Have, to find help, says a relatively little pink-skinned lady to herself, wearing the attire of a Supreme Kai, although her garments are scorched and damaged in some areas. She carries a gold ring. In a rush to escape her pursuers, she opens portal after portal throughout time and space. Rushing to locate assistance, she is desperate until she discovers a really odd chronology. She gulps when she realizes which one she sees. One that is so above the others, and prohibited for her to enter. No other choice, I have to find help, she says as she prepares herself to enter the portal as she is about to breach one of the most important rules that she was given. Never enter a timeline that has been influenced by any outside force. She leaps up as a red energy burst passes where she was before. Kronoa, why are you still trying? Mekikabura asks as he glides in behind her. To stop you, she adds determinedly, prepared to leap towards that time frame. She can already sense a huge difference between this timeline and any others. Truly, the invaders were abominations, she thinks to herself, refusing to lose sight of Mechikabura. It's no use, you know, says another voice, forcing Kronoa to freeze. She turns to look at the owner of that voice. Goku black yet different, much more diverse, floating in the air with pink colored fur surrounding his body and his tail sways from side to side, wearing a time ring on his right hand a green patara on his right ear, and a golden earring on his left ear, but the most important thing is the overwhelming power of time flowing from him. A time halo on his back is quite common. Looking at Kronoa, he notices her desperate plot and lifts his palm as destruction energy starts to build around his hand as his fur seems to become a dark purple. A gateway appears just behind Kronoa as Mekikabura rushes forward. Goku Black immediately prevents him from meddling. So, you know of him too. Black says with a smirk before laughing aloud. Run, he urges with a broad grin, his eyes seeming to flame with thirst for power. Black fires a weak key blast, and Kronoa raises a barrier to guard herself, but it breaks quickly, and she yells in agony as she is sent flying into the portal. This will be fun, said Goku Black. Why did you let her go? Mekikabura asks in an obedient tone. I know where she is, there is no need to rush anymore. That golden time ring will be a thorn in our side for a while longer, observes Goku Black, letting go of an extraordinarily powerful relic in favor of a specific Saiyan's continued growth. Naruto's paw, this hardly tells me anything, I remark sighing as I shut my book of magic. I seek about for Vomi's might and detect her practicing alone. I rubbed my eyes in exasperation. I struck a barrier. More crucially, a big one. Most of the magic I know will be completely worthless in my struggle against Goku Black and whatever else is following him. I need to attain the level of grand magic quickly. It may be a weapon I could employ against Goku Black. Talking about weaponry, I turn and glance at Salama's personnel. I will have to struggle with it. There's no question about that now. I am going to have to utilize it. I am pretty anxious about it, however. Salama's staff provides me a huge amount of strength, and I am certain that with it, I could fend off some of the strongest creatures in Dragon Ball. At least their cannon variants. To be honest, with Salama's staff, I can very likely battle an angel. I wouldn't win, certainly, but the fact that I could really make an angel fight at all is noteworthy. I frown when I know what I will have to accomplish. I need to learn enchanting. Something I've been putting off because of the incredibly high prerequisites to practice it. However, I am certain that this is the topic of study with the greatest information in my book. Oh, certainly, I have been studying about it for a long time, but the quantity of information that exists is enormous. But, 
I know that it will eventually be one of the things that drives my mortal magic to grand magic. I know I'm already on the verge of it, but I need at least two more. Temporal magic, I'd need to locate an instructor quickly for that. As well as soul and magic. My eyes widen as for a brief instant, I sense Goku's black strength all across the cosmos. I instantly teleport over to where I feel him, and I am already in Super Saiyan 4 ready to meet him. I can't keep back my amazement as I get a tiny sight of him. But that's enough, pink hair surrounds his body like a clock-like halo on his back, but what catches my eye is the dark purple hair. No way, ultra ego, I capture the pink skin Kai as she goes out as soon as the gateway shuts. A flash of gold captures my gaze as she drops something. I glance at the golden ring in bewilderment, then smile. Well, that is handy. Using telekinesis, I attempt to drag it over to me before almost falling back as a flash of agony strikes me. Damn, I mutter while massaging my head with my tail as the Kai, who I believe is Kronoa, shuffles about becoming comfortable in my arms. She seems weary, I eventually grip the ring with my tail and take a close look at it. God damn, I almost push Chironoa off my arms as I use my ability to detect the ring and holy crap. This object is full with temporal magic. I wonder whether I should also wish for a pack of Coca-Cola and a lightsaber. Now, what is going on with you, I ask myself as I gaze at Chronoa's situation. I sigh as I transfer us back to one of my bases around the cosmos, ensuring that no one is observing us. I gently place Chronoa on a bed as a number of medical drones emerge from the walls and begin to cater to her. How will I explain this to Vomi? I let out a snort as I walk over the main computer of this base and activate the other features on it. Going over to my house, I carry over my book of magic and read for a few hours after leaving Vomi in a pleasant slumber. In a much better attitude, I go over Goku Black's very short cameo. I will need Connor's aid dealing with him. I dip into my pocket and grab a button that was handed me in case I ever doubt the angel's offer for instruction. I will have to visit Kami after this. Hopefully he enhanced the time chamber. I proceed to hit the button before I receive a notice on the screen of my computer and it just informs me that Kronoa has woken up. I put the button aside as I go up to her. When I enter the room, she stares at me with disbelief. You, you did this, she yells as she points her finger at me and a relatively feeble key blast is fired towards me as she seems to age in a second. I tackle the key blast head on. I don't even bat an eye because I see that I've received no harm at all. I did not even feel that. I hope this does not become a thing. Are you calmed down now? I ask her, as she huffs and returns to a smaller version of herself. Pity, she looked good in her elder form. I think so, she replies, sighing exhaustedly. All right. Now explain what you mean that it's all my fault. I ask her, feeling a pit grow in my stomach. Goku Black watched you make those wishes and wished the same for himself using the Super Dragon Balls, she adds dumping the bomb on me. He attacked my city and took Toki Toki into himself, and stole one of the rings that I made, rings, my ring, where is my ring? She asks herself at the end, rubbing herself on the body. You mean this, I ask displaying the gold time ring on the palm of my hand. Give me that, she says, grabbing it from my hand, and I don't fight her on it as the implications that Goku Black was watching me set in. Well, if it is not the repercussions of my own conduct. Fucking butterfly effect. I sigh, realizing that I will have to deal with him in some manner. I only had one thing to say. Fuck it, I'll deal with it. Somewhere else Percy's paw, sitting down, I stare at the sky in tranquility as my strength pulses under my skin. I let Amaterasu go once I had what I desired. The power of creation is in my palm. Understanding a deity's divine sphere has allowed me to become much more powerful than I could have imagined. I completed what the abandoned demigods wanted to do. I've terminated the age of gods. Single-handedly, sure, some gods still exist, but they were the ones I thought were decent. That's scarcely more than five dozen of them. Now, just three entities stand above me. The Archangel and his father are more powerful than me. The third option is death itself. I'm weary of battling. I brought peace to this earth. Countries are joining as one, illnesses are now being treated far quicker than ever before, cancer is now history, and even leukemia is starting to fade, finally, there will only be one government on earth. Now, 
I must free myself from this world and go on my quest. I turn around and see the chain on my back that connects me to the ruler of heaven. I do not resist, strive, or rage against the chain. I softly reach out to the metaphysical link between the chain and the lock. Please, I beg to what seems to be nothing, yet I can sense his attention is on me and that he is listening. Let me go my own way, I implore no, pleading with him to let me leave. A second later, the lock unlocks and starts to vanish. Thank you, I say gratefully as I leave this world, no reality, and go my own way. Naruto's paw, damn it, I shout out as I smash a hole in a wall in frustration over my foolishness. Zamasu observed what I did, he saw me creating my wishes without my knowledge and decided to do the same for himself by going to other timelines and making his own desires. Kronoa has no understanding of what he longed for, except from desires identical to my own. I do not know what else he could have hoped for. Damn it all. I shake my head because being upset right now would not fix anything. I take a big breath and draw out the little button that Wis gave me. I'm going to have to persuade them to educate me in the time chamber. I'll probably have to remain there for years if I want to be more than just a match for him. Kronoa claims to have the power of time on his side. Flashback begins, how can you be certain that Goku Black was observing me? I inquire of Kronoa, who gazes at the gold time ring adorning her hand, having just elucidated the events surrounding time patrollers. The utilization of the time rings is not particularly discreet. They intentionally create a benign disruption in the time stream, which I can then confirm using the time scrolls. Afterward, I can employ my abilities, or rather, my previous abilities, to rectify the distortion, she starts to clarify. Former power, Goku Black has taken Toki Toki, a bird that possesses the incredible ability to create time simply by breathing. This bird is also the primary source of the powers bestowed upon me as the Grand Supreme Kai of Time. With Goku Black now in possession of Toki Toki, it is highly probable that he will utilize this newfound power to conduct experiments across various timelines, she informs me, causing me to take a deep breath in response. This is a challenging situation. What about that, could it be of assistance? I inquire, gesturing towards the gold time ring. It would have, but Goku Black managed to steal one of the three that exists. I had two in my possession, while the third one was supposed to be in the possession of the dragon god Salama, she answers. I am taken aback by the fact that Salama had one of these gold time rings. The time rings, bestowed upon the grand supreme Kai of each universe, enable, natural, time travel without causing the creation of alternate timelines. Moreover, wearing a time ring bestows a causality upon the wearer, ensuring that they remain unaffected even if their personal past is altered by external factors, she explains. These rings possess similar capabilities but they also grant the power to manipulate time to a limited degree, and they enable one to observe alternate timelines without physical presence, she explains as I gaze at her in awe. This is unacceptable. I am going to need that ring, I inform her, expressing my frustration as I rub my face. No, not at all, she says, Kronoa, I am the one who can assist you. The ring is not necessary at this moment, but it will be required in the near future, I assure her. She falls silent, likely recalling the repercussions of failing in her responsibilities. With the entire time patrol either deceased or trapped in alternate dimensions, she had Goku and Vegeta by her side, who managed to temporarily impede Goku Black before being transported elsewhere. I, I will, she says, her gaze fixed on the ground. With a deep breath, I approach her. Goku Black got his inspiration from me, and I'm seeking your assistance in bringing him down, I confide in her burdened by the gravity of my choices. I must put an end to his actions, I inform her, meeting her gaze directly. End of flashback, still contemplating, huh, Vomi says, embracing me from behind and resting her head on my shoulder, providing me with comfort. Yes, I take full responsibility for this, I say, gently holding her hands and intertwining our fingers. Are you going to ask them? She asks, observing the button in my hand. I don't have any other option at this point. I will have to persuade them to train in the time chamber with me. It will be extremely difficult to enhance my godly forms without proper training, I mention as she plants a kiss on my cheek. If you believe that this is the best option, go ahead and pursue it. You have my complete support, she says, planting a kiss on my lips, which I eagerly reciprocate. 
Swiftly, I stow the button and firmly grasp her behind, effortlessly lifting her off the ground as she sensually presses against me. Let's go to our room, she whispers to me as I gently caress her, exploring her body with care and intimacy. We quickly arrive at our room, proceed with caution, you have been warned. I carefully place Vomi on the bed and join her, sharing a passionate kiss. I gently guide her tongue back into her mouth and begin to explore it. She sighs softly as our lips meet, stirring a certain desire within me. We break the kiss and I gaze into her eyes, which radiate with excitement. She quickly destroys my shirt as I remove her top and gaze at her chest with desire. I take one of her nipples into my mouth and start to suck on it, eliciting a loud moan from Vomi. Continuing to nurse, I am soon rewarded as milk is released and I consume it eagerly. Teaching her aromancy was an excellent choice I made. She gently strokes my head while I continue to sip my drink. I must confess, I have developed a strong preference for the flavor of her breast milk. The experience of intimacy with her has brought me a newfound sense of excitement that I never knew before. I gently pull back and proceed to massage her left breast, then move on to her right breast. Efficiently extracting as much milk as possible, I carefully nurse from the nipple. As I struggle, I hear Vomi moan loudly as I can feel my pants, which I somehow still have on, becoming damp from her excitement. She arrived, my excitement builds as I swiftly remove my pants and use my tail to gently wrap around her waist, skillfully removing her pants and underwear. She delicately lifts my head from her chest, gazes into my eyes, and places her hands on the sides of my face. I gently moved my hand from her left breast to her cheek, caressing it as I leaned in to kiss her once more. We separate with a strand of saliva still linking us. She approaches me closely, placing her head next to mine while breathing heavily with desire. Take me, she whispers into my ear, panting. She tightly embraces her legs while her hair undergoes a dramatic color change to white and her skin takes on a rosy hue. I guide myself towards her entrance and enter her as we both express pleasure. As I gaze into her eyes, I lean in for another kiss while maintaining a steady rhythm. Naruto's perspective exploring Vomi's desires elicited a passionate response from both of us as we continued to embrace. Once again, I hold her up as she moves energetically on top of me, her breathing becoming more intense. She rests her head against the side of my neck and lets out a soft sound into my ear as I continue with my movements. More, she softly murmurs into my ear and I willingly comply, sensing her growing energy as I do the same. The safeguards in this room illuminate as we activate and allow ourselves to relax. She expresses her pleasure audibly, our connection deepens as our tails intertwine, and she leans back slightly to kiss me once more. We engaged in a passionate exchange before I gently lifted us above the bed and then carefully returned us to the mattress, positioning her in an intimate embrace. I begin once more, gently teasing her, causing her to let out an audible groan. I suppress a smirk as I understand her desire for me to increase my pace. She may enjoy a more intense approach, but she becomes overwhelmed when I opt for a slower pace, which allows me to express my passion more deeply. She is very attractive and has a great figure. She returns once more, her liquid landing on my lap as she sinks her teeth into my neck. Observing her expression, tears of joy are evident in her eyes. She releases a sob as she is almost overcome with pleasure and I choose to intensify the experience. With expertise in magic, particularly elemental magic of the electric variety, she cries out as my member is enveloped in a delicate energy that expertly stimulates every sensitive area within her. She lets out a joyful cry as her tongue emerges from her mouth, which I eagerly meet with my own. She embraces me tightly, seeking solace as she surrenders to the blissful sensations. She is overcome with intense joy, her body trembling with great power. She embraces me tightly as she instinctively attempts to regain composure. I will not allow her. I raise her up once more and ascend to Super Saiyan 4, while she also undergoes a transformation of her own, attempting to keep up with my power. Her performance is far from satisfactory. I resume my movements, expressing my pleasure audibly as I enjoy the sensation she provides. I passionately explore her mouth with my tongue, expressing my desire. Leaning back, I gaze into her eyes with intensity, causing her to immediately shift her gaze towards me, acknowledging my presence. Mine, I assert with determination. Yes, 
she moans out as her body reacts intensely and she experiences another release, while I continue with my movements. I positioned her legs on my shoulders and gently guided her towards the wall. Once her back is against the wall, I start to unleash myself upon her. Her arms hang limp at her sides as she emits a soft whimper. Can you please provide me with more, she requests, maintaining eye contact, and I willingly comply. I let out a deep growl as I feel myself nearing climax, which catches her attention. She leans in and passionately kisses me, her tongue exploring my mouth. In the heat of the moment, I assertively engage with her, showing my desire for her. I am the owner of it, my mind is consumed by desire. Inside, make sure you don't waste it, she cries out, overwhelmed with pleasure. Please, come inside, she pleads with me as tears of joy stream down her face. I release my energy and climax inside her with a powerful roar that fills the room. The intense energy in the air seems to strain against the room's boundaries as I unleash my extraordinary strength, following the technique I learned from Roshi. Get energized utilizing both in combination on my genitalia results in a significant increase in size. Amidst a moment of uncertainty, I glance downwards at our connection, realizing the depth of our intimacy. I pause my passionate exploration, reminded of a unique quality that we both possess. Our margin stretching, this explains the situation in a highly inappropriate and disturbing manner. It is evident that the writer is engaging in harmful and disrespectful behavior towards another individual. Oh my goodness, I maintain my composure as I observe her. She is perspiring profusely as vapor escapes from her body. I observe her as she appears to be completely disoriented. I return to our room, disregarding the untidiness, and recline with Bomi still by my side. As I lay down on the bed, she also transforms and I do the same, releasing my transformed state and ceasing to use the pump-up technique. She remains in her Majin form. She curls up into a fetal position, or tries to at least as my penis is still inside her. She holds onto me tightly, her quiet sobs fading as she drifts off to sleep. Yet, her body still trembles from our passionate encounter. I hold her close, cradling her against me, as our bodies intertwine in a loving embrace. I gently plan to kiss on her head as she instinctively snuggles closer to me, seeking comfort in my embrace. Eventually, she becomes at ease and I pull her in for a tighter embrace. I peacefully close my eyes and drift off into a restful sleep. Finished with a citrus twist. Upon waking, I sense Vomi still nestled against me, her left ear resting on my chest, seemingly finding comfort in the sound of my heartbeat as we sleep. I skillfully and expertly massage her scalp, observing with delight the radiant smile on her face even in her slumber. I may need to adjust my approach next time as she seemed unresponsive to my actions. It's worth mentioning that a certain incident still brings a sense of amusement to my mind. The expression on her face, with her tongue protruding, was quite comical. I skillfully channel magic into my hand, gently massaging her scalp and utilizing healing magic to enhance her relaxation. She appears to become more comfortable and relaxed in my presence. Something I learned through experience is that incorporating massages into roleplay can have a relaxing effect on the body, even when there are no specific ailments to address. It's fascinating how healing magic can contribute to overall relaxation. I can't help but smile as I continue to gaze at Vomi. I thoroughly enjoy experiencing moments like these, where all of my worries disappear and I can truly save her life. My smile fades as thoughts of my adversaries and all that eludes me return with a vengeance. As I continue to examine Bomi, I make a personal commitment to do everything within my power to address the situation. Unlike others, I do have a life to live Naruto's point of view. I press the button to contact Whis, and after a few seconds, an image appears on the screen. Naruto, what brings you here? Let me guess, it's about the training, he says and I simply nod in response. Getting straight to the point, I suppose, sure, I would be interested in training with you. Excellent, though, I'm curious about what influenced your decision. He inquires. I haven't made significant progress with God Key, at least not to a level that satisfies me. I explain politely as I discuss my limited advancements in this area. Not unexpected, he replies. It was quite surprising to discover that the ritual performed by you Saiyans actually granted you your own form of God Key he remarks, capturing my full attention. Why was it so surprising? I inquire, 
seeking an explanation from him. God Ki is truly exceptional, a power that eludes all mortal beings. To attain it, one must make significant sacrifices, often dedicating countless hours to rigorous training, enduring physical exertion, and even shedding tears. However, the most perilous consequence is the risk of losing one's own identity, he responds. Loss, oh, individuals are not adequately prepared to bear the weight of godhood, even if they achieve god key. The repercussions can be significant if they overlook any aspect during their ascent, he explains. As you are aware, one limitation of mortals is their finite memory storage capacity in their brains. However, with the power of god key, this limitation can be surpassed, allowing individuals to continuously expand their memory storage, provided they possess the required god key, he explains. I remain silent, as this information was already discovered by me through Salama's notes. Kind of. Salama's notes provided a detailed explanation of the process, which was quite complex for me to grasp at the moment. However, I am truly grateful for Weiss's assistance in simplifying it for me. It can be frustrating to try to understand his notes when he goes off on tangents and you have to meticulously double-check every word to ensure accuracy. In addition, Salama did not document every detail. So, there are strict limitations on, mortal, key. Frankly, I should have anticipated this, given the circumstances. I remark, attempting to uphold an air of unawareness. Yes, and no, responds Wiss. God key may enable individuals to surpass the capabilities of most mortals. However, mortal key also possesses its own unique advantages, particularly for those who have acquired divine power. It must be acknowledged that mortals who have pushed themselves to their limits are quite rare, and those who have obtained divine power are even scarcer, he explains, leaving me momentarily taken aback. It appears that mere mortals have managed to acquire divine power independently in the past. Quite intriguing. The potential of mortal key and its capabilities differ from one individual to another, as everyone is unique. Certain individuals possess a greater capacity for growth, but they may never fully tap into it without the right guidance, understanding, or investment of time, he explains. Is the training you offer of high quality? I inquire, displaying genuine interest. I would like to earn some recognition or favor. Indeed, the effectiveness of a particular training method can vary from person to person. However, I understand that you are more interested in receiving the training rather than listening to me digress. Please allow me a moment to fetch you, he says as I raise my hand. Regarding that, I am aware of a location where we can undergo an intensive year's worth of training in just one day, I begin. I am confident that this training will require a significant amount of time, and it's important to note that I have commitments outside of training, I mention, concealing the fact that my schedule is currently quite busy. Hmm, that works for me. How long were you planning on staying in that dimension? He inquires. How long do you think it would take me to fully understand God Key? I inquire earnestly, causing him to blink in surprise. Hmm, about 26 years, he says and I nod in agreement. What about everything you may want to teach me? I inquire of him. 1.8 million, he responds confidently, causing my eyes to widen in surprise. Oops. I was aware of their superior skill and power, but I still inquired about the time it would take for them to impart their knowledge to me. Rest assured, once you have a firm grasp on God Key, time will become insignificant, he says with a smile directed at me. I'll check with my siblings to see if they're interested, he says as the image vanishes. I breathe a sigh of relief, glad that the conversation went as smoothly as I had anticipated. Fortunately, I enlisted Kami's expertise to enhance the door to the time chamber with the help of the Dragon Balls. I already have the supplies, which I believe are unnecessary now that I no longer require sustenance. Even sleep is not an option. I still find them enjoyable, but they are no longer necessary for me. The food is intended for a higher purpose. I patiently wait for approximately 20 minutes until a beam of light suddenly descends a few meters away from me, revealing the arrival of Wiss accompanied by Vados. We are here, our other siblings stayed behind, remarks Wiss as I simply nod in agreement. So, where is this dimension? Inquires Wiss as I gesture for them both to come along. We are currently searching and I have instructed Kami to remain discreet, so he is currently in his office conversing with some Namekians he has befriended. I reached out to the Namekians of New Namek to inquire about their potential interest in paying him a visit. 
utilizing instant transmission is highly advantageous. So, what's our first order of business? I inquire, eager to kickstart a conversation. We will start by assessing your current level of strength before proceeding with your training. Once we identify areas for improvement, we can work towards helping you reach your full potential," replied Beidos confidently. So, once we enter, we will have a limited time of 30 days, which will feel like a lifetime, I say. Honestly, I simply desire a solid understanding of God key, but I am always open to learning more about it, I continue. I am uncertain if I will be able to handle more than that, I admit candidly. Based on our previous observation, it seems that you have made significant progress, remarks Wiss as we finally arrive at the time chamber. I open the door and welcome them both inside, focusing on maintaining a professional demeanor. She is an attractive individual, that is for certain. Shutting the door as I enter, I notice that there have been some updates, including the inclusion of three additional beds, bringing the total to five. Fascinating perspective, remarks Vados. It appears that this place was intentionally crafted, rather than stumbled upon, remarks Wiss. It was crafted by one of the former guardians of Earth, I mention. Afterwards, it was enhanced by the subsequent iterations, I explain to them. Shall we begin, asks Vados, standing opposite me as we move a considerable distance away from the entrance. I give it my all in base form and launch myself towards them with full force. Commencing our training, Naruto's point of view. Strong. It is flowing through every aspect of my existence. After dedicating a significant amount of time and effort, I have successfully achieved the powerful Super Saiyan God transformation. Not only is a temporary power or something that is fleeting. When I first acquired it during my encounter with Beerus, the experience was quite different. Currently, I am maintaining the form, allowing the God Key to flow through my entire being, raising me to a more elevated state. It's interesting how power can truly transform a person, as the show never explicitly explores this aspect. It seems that the anime didn't cover that particular aspect. I am amazed by the significant disparity in power and the lack of proper explanation. With my level of expertise, I could easily overpower my former self using Super Saiyan God at full force. With my powerful combination of abilities, including the legendary Super Saiyan 4 full power and the mark of Naruto, I was able to reach the maximum potential of Kaio Ken X112. It's truly remarkable to see the immense power of Goku Black. I will strive to catch up to him. I need to. Impressive, remarks Vados as she assesses my appearance. Remember to keep your focus on maintaining your energy within your body, she reminds me, and I diligently direct my attention towards that. There is a clear distinction. Previously, the aura appeared as if it was being emitted. Now that I have acquired the necessary skills, I understand that I will need to dedicate a significant amount of time and effort to further develop my abilities. The sheer power and overwhelming presence is a bit too much for me right now. It is completely different from Mortal Key. What truly stands out is the remarkable strength displayed by Jiren in both the anime and certain manga that I've come across. Wow, that's quite surprising. I am confident that the only beings in this universe who can surpass me are the angels and Beerus. I confidently descend to the ground and produce a mirror to assess my appearance. Hum, I remark while observing my newly vibrant red hair, eyebrows, eyes, and tail. I have a reddish hue to my skin, almost pink. Now the true training will commence, declares Wiss. Let's do it, I say, fully committed to further enhancing my abilities. At a later point in time, here I go, I confidently declare as I swiftly move towards Vados, determined to land a hit on her despite the challenge that lies ahead. I have been utilizing God Key in combination with Super Saiyan, resulting in my attainment of Super Saiyan Blue several months ago. It has been six years since we entered the time chamber. I have become more powerful than ever before. I have achieved a high level of mastery in Super Saiyan God, ensuring that I am able to contain and control my energy without any leakage. Super Saiyan Blue is a completely unique entity. I can see the reasoning behind Goku and Vegeta's decision to switch. Currently, my power level is significantly lower than when I am in Super Saiyan God form. I am completely worn out. Something I haven't experienced in a while. I am finding it challenging to maintain my immortality due to the immense energy demand I have been subjecting myself to. I have not slept in over two years now as I have been training tirelessly. 
I suppose my immortality does have its limitations. Currently, I spend the next few days, tirelessly trying to land a hit on Beidos despite the seemingly insurmountable challenge it presents at the moment. I will put forth my utmost effort, utilizing the serene influence of God Key, I maintain a composed demeanor as I persist in my endeavors. Several years later, in chamber 14 out of 30, take a deep breath and exhale slowly. Keep my heartbeat steady and concentrate. I am at the peak of my abilities, deep in meditation. True Super Saiyan God, this form utilizes three contrasting forms. My God form demands a high level of composure and concentration. I no longer have access to my usual Super Saiyan forms and instead, I am stuck with the legendary variant of them. Not that I have any strong feelings about it, it was quite a challenge to harness the immense power of the Great Ape. However, there is a project that I am currently focusing on. I have successfully coordinated the efforts of all three parties. However, I acknowledge that there is still much progress to be made before I can fully harness this remarkable ability. I am grateful for the support of my immortality in helping me navigate through it all. It would have been challenging to harness the full potential of this form. Currently, I am confident in my ability to challenge Goku Black. I need to become proficient in this form in order to train for Ultra Instinct or at least familiarize myself with it. This is crucial as I plan to locate Maris and have Super 17 and Super 18 replicate his abilities through modifications acquired from the Namekian Dragon. These modifications will allow me to obtain 7-3's blueprints, which were engineered by Vomi. I will request a professional effort to document the power of Maris and provide it to me. I understand, acquiring Ultra Instinct before the battle with Goku Black may not be feasible, but it is crucial to have a powerful strategy in place. I have complete confidence in the power of Ultra Instinct, not only in opposition to him, but also in support of anyone else collaborating with him. Final day of the 30-year journey in the chamber, I release a deep sigh as I am finally getting out of this place. Thank you, I say with utmost respect to both Wiss and Vados. Oh, it was not a problem, states Wiss as they enjoy a chocolate milkshake. I have brought an ample supply of food to sustain us for a significant duration. It was quite enjoyable, remarks Vados, delicately covering her mouth as she savors each bite of a triple meat bacon cheeseburger. One interesting observation about these two characters is that Wiss has a preference for healthy foods, while Vados has a completely different taste. She enjoys indulging in foods that are rich in grease, such as pizza, burgers, and wings. Wiss prefers tea, while Vados has a preference for soft drinks. I wouldn't have achieved such growth without your guidance, I express, reverting back to my original state and feeling a slight unsteadiness due to the significant decrease in power. It has been six years since I last left my altered state. It may require some time to readjust once more. Undoubtedly, you must acknowledge your exceptional talent and unwavering determination. I genuinely appreciate your sincere consideration of our advice, Vados compliments me. I have discovered that Beerus has not taken their advice into consideration, which is understandable given the vast power difference between him and me. Nevertheless, it was enjoyable, she remarks as she finishes her burger. I nod towards them, feeling a sense of anticipation to finally depart from this location. As I open the door, I inhale a refreshing breath of air. We move to the edge of the lookout as I scan the area for power levels, and fortunately, everything appears to be in order. Goodbye Naruto, continue your training, Wiss remarks as he neatly stores a box brimming with HOI Poi capsules containing a variety of delectable dishes. It was a pleasure. Please feel free to reach out to us once you have resolved your personal matters, says Vados in a friendly manner. I will, take care now, I say with a smile as she huffs, seemingly annoyed that Wiss only took his box while leaving three behind. One for their sibling, one for Beerus, and one for Vados. I shift my gaze slightly to the side to observe Kami as she approaches, briefly noticing Vados's figure. She has an attractive physique, Naruto's point of view. Observing Wiss and Vado's depart confirms many of the thoughts I had. I am still not where I want to be. 30 years of experience in the hyperbolic time chamber. Continually growing in strength and expertise. However, I was unable to even come close to landing a hit on either of them. Maybe I had set my expectations too high. I quickly teleport back to my home, as it has been quite some time since I've been here. 
I am delighted to see Vomi on a table, eagerly awaiting my arrival. A quick look around reveals her attempt to surprise me. I approach her with a sense of professionalism and gently embrace her waist. Hey, I softly murmur as I breathe in her familiar fragrance that I've longed for. I missed you, I express, as she turns her head and plants a gentle kiss on my cheek. I am exhausted, I begin to say after a while as she turns around and embraces me tightly. Thirty years in that place, I can imagine, she whispers softly in my ear, gently nuzzling her head against mine. I have prepared a meal for you. Afterward, it would be best for you to go to bed. She kisses me on the lips and I kiss her back. Thank you, I express my gratitude to her, as a big smile lights up her face. Come on, she says, guiding me to the chair as she separates from me. I take a seat and Bomi joins me, settling on my lap. I gently embrace her, wrapping my arms around her waist. Did anything occur while I was in the chamber? I inquire with her. Not much of significance, but Kronoa returned to the time nest to search for any potentially valuable items. I had both 17 and 18 go with her as a precautionary measure, just in case someone was waiting for her. Fortunately, there was no one, and she returned with a few intriguing gadgets that I've been experimenting with. She expertly selects a bite of food and delicately feeds it to me. Did she discover any valuable findings? I inquire of her once I've finished consuming the meal. She discovered multiple malfunctioning time machines utilized by the time patrol. She mentioned that those ones don't seem to cause distortions or create alternate timelines. They may prove useful if I manage to solve it, she says, and I turn to look at her. Excuse me, manipulating time can be quite problematic, believe me. It should only be considered as a last resort. Moreover, if we ever find ourselves in a situation where we have to utilize it and fail to address it on our initial attempt after our initial time traveling experience, we are in serious trouble. I caution her about the perils of time travel, and I am understating the severity of the situation. Repeating the act of traveling back in time would result in a time loop, leading to significant destruction and consequences. Regardless of the situation, we would be fully committed to resolving the problem. Another approach would be to think creatively and explore alternative solutions. For instance, attempting to rescue someone who is fated to perish during a specific occurrence. If someone needs to be relocated before their passing, it is advisable to arrange for their transfer a few days in advance. It is important to ensure that they are kept calm and sedated during the process, and to keep them away from the location in question. Distance is key, it simply requires some careful consideration. Of course, each situation will vary. However, an individual simply needs to think creatively. What can you tell me about the 7-3 project? I inquire with her. I completed it and have since made significant improvements to the design. She responds with confidence and I lean in to kiss her. I am content, I am extremely pleased right now. An upgraded 7-3 is precisely what I require at this moment. Now, I must locate Maris and establish contact with him. I made a mistake, I don't require Maris. Well, not entirely, I suppose. I have Kronoa with me, and I am confident that she would be open to sending me to the precise moment when 7-3's arm is severed by Maris. This would allow me to obtain the arm, which contains a duplicate of Maris's abilities. The following day, yes, I understand the specific moment you're referring to, but may I ask why you're interested in it? Kronoa inquires, her arms folded in front of her. I respond with, ultra instinct, causing her eyes to widen. I, I comprehend, she says with a resigned tone, which almost makes me feel guilty for asking this of her. However, given the circumstances, she doesn't have many alternatives remaining. I am taking a significant gamble Kronoa, I assure you, I would prefer to undergo training and achieve it on my own. However, at the moment, time is not a luxury that I possess, I explain to her. I understand, she replies. Here's my payment for assisting you. Furthermore, Seventeen can assist you in reconstructing the time patrol and locating those who were displaced. Once I have resolved the matter with Goku Black, I will also contribute to the rebuilding efforts, I offer as it was already something that I had planned on. I understand, it's just, Ultra Instinct is a power that should not be misused, she cautions me and I acknowledge her concern. Let's get started. She says after a while and gestures with her hands, causing a small portal to open. 
Without hesitation, I sprint towards it in my fastest form and swiftly grasp the hand that emerges before me. The portal closes as soon as I retract my hand. I quickly react as Chronoa falls, swiftly catching her midair and carefully placing her on the ground. Thank you, I say, firmly grasping Moro's severed arm. Certainly, I can assist you with that. She falls into a deep slumber, completely worn out. I take a deep breath, preparing myself for what lies ahead, and gather my resolve. I transform the hand into chocolate and consume it. I will handle it in a methodical manner, gradually incorporating it into my essence. Just as I did with Brawley's physique, I lost access to my usual Super Saiyan forms after the majority of my body was consumed by my Majin side. I am performing the same action on Moro's hand as a newfound power courses through me. I start to intentionally reduce the intensity of the energy entering my being. Maris's immense power proved to be too much for Moro's body, leading to his ultimate destruction from within. I am capable of enduring it however, only a small amount at a time. I close my eyes and undergo a powerful transformation, feeling the intensity surge through me as I clench my teeth. With each breath, I strive to steady my racing heart as I feel the immense surge of energy flowing within me. How did Moro manage to handle such a thing? I feel an intense heat surging through my body, but fortunately, my god key is now providing some relief from the discomfort. Wow, this truly showcases the incredible abilities of an angel. It exceeds my initial expectations. I couldn't help but smile with delight at the immense power. I have a powerful advantage now. Stay tuned for more. And that's a wrap for now. Thank you so much for tuning into this incredible video. If you absolutely loved it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for even more amazing content coming your way.